target 8.1, model inverse and joint variation. So uh, earlier this year, we learned about direct variation. And so after today, I want you to be able to apply direct, which we already learned about. Direct variation is y equals ax, where a is a constant. And inverse and joint variation equations, which we are going to learn about today. So here are the basics of what we're doing today. Um, direct variation we already learned about, and that is the equation y equals ax, where a is a non-zero constant term. So a could be a half, a could be five, um, that is the direct variation equation. Inverse variation is the relationship of two variables, x and y, with a being a non-zero constant, once again, such that y equals a divided by x. And once again, your y-intercept of this equation will also be zero. And then the last type of variation we'll talk about today is joint variation, when a quantity varies directly with the product of two or more other quantities. And so a, the constant, will still be a part of the joint variation equations as well, but it's going to vary directly with several different quantities, and we'll look at some examples of that. So in example one here, we want to just look at and classify direct and inverse variation equations. So here is our first equation, a, x, y equals 7. Well, before we can tell if it is direct or inverse variation, or neither, we always want to rewrite it as y equals something because our direct variation and inverse variation equations are rewritten as y equals. So in this one, we would rewrite it as y equals 7 over x. <clears throat> and so because we are dividing in this one, and 7 is our a value, this is inverse variation. Okay, because it's in the form y equals a over x. All right, part B. Part B, we've got y equals x plus 3. So this one is already in a y equals form. So is it either in the form y equals ax or a divided by x? And the answer is neither. Because of that plus 3, because we are adding 3 to it, it is neither direct or inverse variation. All right, and then part C, part C, we need to get y by itself first. So our rewritten equation down here is going to be y equals 4x. And so this is y equals ax, so direct variation. And your a value in this one is 4. Your a value in this one is 4. Sorry, I think I got cut off there. So now we want to write an inverse variation equation. So the first thing you want to do is read through the problem. Um, we've got a var variables x and y vary inversely, and y equals 7 when x equals 4. So we want to write the equation that relates x and y. That's step one. And then find y when x equals negative 2. So let's start with the first part here. We know that the inverse variation general equation is y equals a over x. And what we're being told is that y is 7, so we'll substitute in 7, and that x is 4. So 7 equals a over 4. Well, we need to find a, the constant of variation, and so in order to do that, we just go ahead and multiply by 4. So multiply by 4 on the right and on the left. And our a value is 28. 
and therefore our equation is y equals 28 divided by x. Okay, so now part two. Part two says find y when x equals negative two. So we just go ahead and substitute it into the equation we just wrote. Uh, y equals 28 divided by negative 2, and so our y value is just negative 14. Okay, so that's just an example of writing an inverse variation equation. All right, so a word problem with this, an inverse variation model, could be something having to do with an MP3 player. So the number of songs that can be stored on an MP3 player varies inversely with the average size of a song. Okay, so the number of songs varies inversely with the average size of a song. <coughs> Excuse me. A certain MP3 player can store 2,500 songs when the average size of a song is 4 megabytes. So we want to start by writing the inverse variation model. We know it's inverse because it says varies inversely. So number of songs we'll call N. Average size of a song we'll call S. So N varies inversely with S. Okay? A is always that constant of variation that we're going to be solving for. Okay? So let's plug in what we know. We know that if you have 2,500 songs... then the average song would be 4 megs. Okay, so we just go ahead and solve for A again. We get 10,000 equal to A, and therefore our equation would be the number of songs is 10,000 divided by the size of the average song. Part 2 says, make a table showing the number of songs that will fit on the MP3 player if the average size of a song is 2 megs, 2.5 megs, 3 megs, and 5 megabytes, as shown below. What happens to the number of songs as the average size increases? Okay, so go ahead and make your table. And we look at the average song size N which we were given to find out what is the number of songs when it's two, two and a half, three, and five. So we are going to use the equation that we just wrote above, which was n equals 10,000 divided by s. So 10,000 divided by two is 5,000. 10,000 divided by 2.5 gives us 4,000. Okay. 10,000 divided by 3 gives us 3,333.33, repeating. And 10,000 divided by 5 gives us 2,000 songs. Okay, so it says what happens as the number... What happens to the number of songs as the average song size increases? So as the average song size increases, the number of songs will decrease. Okay, and that's what inverse variation is. As one of your values increases, so this is going up, as your, y, as your x values, or s is the variable we used here, your y values are actually decreasing. Okay, and so that's why it is inverse variation. All right, so our last example we're going to look at is about joint variation. And joint variation occurs, like I said earlier in the 
slides that um, this ends up happening when we have the product of two or more other quantities that varies directly. Okay, so if z varies jointly with x and y, then z equals some constant a times both x and y. Okay, then if p varies jointly with q, r, and s, that means that p equals some constant a times all q, r, and s, as written over here. Okay, so the variable z varies jointly with x and y. So how would we just write that? It means z equals a times x, y. Okay, so now we want to actually substitute in some numbers here. So z equals negative 75 when x equals 3 and y equals negative 5. So we need to, one, write the equation that relates x, y, and z, and then two, find z when x equals 2 and y equals 6. So we've got a couple parts here that we need to take care of. So part one, writing the equation. If z is equal to axy, and we know that z is negative 75, A is what we're looking for, X is 3, and Y is negative 5. Then let's go ahead and solve for A here. So negative 75 equals negative 15A. And so our A value, our constant, is 5. Okay, which makes our equation Z equals 5 times x times y. Now, part 2, it said to find out what is z when x equals 2 and y equals 6. So we just go ahead and substitute those into the equation that we just wrote. So, x is 2, y is 6, and so z would equal 60 in this joint variation equation. Okay? So I want to challenge you with just one more extra example that's going to combine two of our types of uh, variation today. So I want you to write this down and then pause the video and try it on your own. X varies inversely with Y and jointly with A and B. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's use a different letter instead of A. How about C and B? Okay. Sorry about that. So X varies inversely with Y and jointly with C and B. I want you to write what would this equation look like. Okay, so pause the video and try it, and then when you unpause, I'll go through the answer. Alright, so the reason that I had to change that from an A is because remember, A is always the constant. A is the term that we're going to use as the constant of variation. So X varies inversely with y, and so that means that y is going into the denominator. Okay, and then jointly with c and b means that c and b get multiplied in the numerator. So what is this going to look like? x varies inversely with, while well, A, the constant, always goes in the numerator, jointly with B and C, or C and B, order doesn't matter there, over the Y, because the Y was the inverse variation. So, in class, we will go through plenty more examples and a couple more applications working with 
these different types of variation. See you then.